This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a horror, sci-fi and thriller film called The Changed. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the suburbs of Connecticut, Jane wakes up from a dream of a woman whimpering. Outside, her husband Mac drinks coffee with their neighbor Bill. Mac expresses concern over people's recent uncaring attitude. Bill shoots down his worries and tells him they're not uninterested, just finally waking up. Mac refuses to talk politics, but Bill says it's more important than politics. Mac points out that Bill used to be Mr. Political Correctness, but now he doesn't care. Mac insists people are acting differently, and he feels that something is not right. Suddenly, Bill leans in close as if to kiss him. Mac pushes him away, thinking Bill is teasing him. Bill only smiles and tells Mac there's nothing to be afraid of. He tries to convince Mac that he's just paranoid and needs to be more open to change. He thanks Mac for the coffee and promises to return the power saw he borrowed later. He leaves for work but stops and talks to a beautiful neighbor out on a jog. The woman keeps looking at Mac and waves a small goodbye before jogging away. Before heading to work, Jane expresses the same worry as Max that something doesn't feel right. Mac assures her that they're just imagining it and that everything will be fine. Meanwhile, at the local high school, Kim stands by the lockers watching students pass by. She greets some girls, but they ignore her. Sky walks over and tells her she doesn't have to feel defensive and insecure anymore. Sky steps closer, making Kim feel uncomfortable, so she steps back and leaves. At work, Mac's boss, Marlo, reprimands him for having anger issues. Mac agrees that he can be a little intense, but he doesn't feel like he needs to agree with everyone every time. Marlo offers him help and begins touching him leaning in close, making Mac feel uncomfortable. Marlo gives him the day off to think about what she said. At the hospital, people hysterically scream that their loved ones are not the same people anymore. Jane asks to leave early and hides in the employee section when her supervisor, Ethan, comes to convince her to stay. Ethan tells her the governor will declare a state of emergency and they need help in the ER. But Jane is worried and questions how he knew about that since their phones don't work. Just then, Ethan steps closer and tries to force himself on Jane, so she desperately tries to fight back. While heading home, Mac checks their letters when a man comes running, yelling at him to get inside. The man's wife runs after him in her apron at full speed. The beautiful neighbor from earlier then greets Mac and introduces herself as Sarah. Mac asks her what she and Bill were talking about that morning when Sarah suddenly unzips her vest and comes onto him. Just then, Sarah greets Kim as she rounds the corner. She zips her vest back up and jogs away. Kim knows Sarah and agrees with Mac that she's acting strange, as do her friends at school. They conclude that something is going on. A siren blares in the distance and the two share a look. Kim stays with Mac while she waits for her uncle since her mom works the night shift. She tries to call her mom to ask where her uncle hid his keys but gets no reception. They discover that the phones, television, and Wi-Fi all have no signal. Feeling like she's being watched, Kim looks out the window and catches a glimpse of someone behind a tree. Mac fetches an old radio where an emergency notification for evacuation plays on loop, announcing that the governor has declared a state of emergency. The broadcast says to ignore the previous warnings to stay indoors. Mac and Kim look at each other confused, not having heard of these previous instructions. The broadcast continues to say that everyone is now required to head to the nearest public school or emergency shelter where police and military personnel will give further instructions. Failure to comply will subject them to criminal procedures. The gravity of the situation dawns on Mac and Kim. Mac refuses to leave without Jane, worried since she isn't home yet. Kim timidly asks him if this might be the end of the world, but Mac says prophecy doomsdays happen all the time. He assures Kim that tomorrow, people will forget all about it. Still. Kim looks unconvinced and says she feels nothing will ever be the same again. Just then, the radio picks up a new signal from a distressed US naval captain who confirms their fears that people have changed and are now organizing to infiltrate the government and the military. He urges everyone to be vigilant and trust no one. His broadcast cuts off with distant yelling in the background. Mac worries that Jane hasn't arrived yet, so Kim tries to comfort him, but Mac snaps at her instead. Kim goes to sit alone but spots people running across the backyard. She checks outside but finds the backyard empty. She hurries back and tells Mac what she saw, just as Jane finally arrives. Jane storms in and shakily tells them that Ethan tried to kiss her while telling her there's nothing to be afraid of. Mac is livid and threatens to kill Ethan. Jane already reported Ethan to security and HR, but no one seemed to care so she left. 
Mac and Kim tell her what the US Naval captain said about people changing. Jane exclaims that's what the patient at the hospital had been saying too. She believes it's something contagious but not airborne. Mac tries to calm her down and promises he'll protect them, while Kim worries that she doesn't know where her uncle is and she can't reach her mom. They see Bill approaching the house, but Jane doesn't trust him. Mac opens the door for a fraction and greets Bill. Bill tries to return Mac's power saw, then asks them what's wrong. Mac explains the situation, but Bill doesn't seem to care. Jane and Kim sense something is wrong with Bill and urge Mac to close the door. Suddenly, Bill forcefully enters the house and gets a hold of Mac's head, trying to pull him in. Jane runs and gets one of their shotguns. She loads and points it at Bill, who finally steps away from Mac. After some time, Mac and Jane have Bill tied to a chair in their basement while Kim watches from behind. They interrogate Bill, but he just says he's a changed, perfected version of himself. He answers their questions about past events and remembers everything about them. Bill reveals he was kissed by a woman the day before, and he has become a changed man since then. Mac remembers Bill also tried to kiss him that morning, and Jane realized that was why Ethan tried to kiss her as well. They conclude that whatever is happening spreads through saliva during a kiss. Just then, they hear loud knocking upstairs, so Kim and Mac checks to see if it's her uncle. Unsure if he's been changed, they wait until Kurt starts talking, confirming he's still him because of his callous attitude. Mac opens the door to ask him questions, but Kurt has no time for his nonsense and wants to get Kim so he can go home and rest. Tired from his work as a cargo truck driver, he says he doesn't care if other people are infected with whatever. He just wants to go home. He goes to leave until Kim tells him they have Bill in the basement and drags him down to see for himself. When Kurt gets to the basement, he is confused and accuses them of pranking him. He tries to untie Bill, but Mac pushes him away. They tell him what's happening, but Kurt doesn't listen and insists that they're committing a felony. Kim asks Bill what he'd do if they let him go, and Bill easily answers that he'd change all of them. Kurt argues that Bill must have gone insane, and tying him to a chair won't help. Bill and Kim lock eyes as the adults fight until Jane takes her shotgun and points it at Kurt, shutting him up. With Kurt quiet, they turn on Bill again and ask him what changing them means. Bill explains that changing them will perfect them, ushering in a higher order of existence. The change will allow for peaceful coexistence and unlock humanity's full potential. Jane is fed up with Bill's words and points the shotgun at him again. This doesn't faze Bill, who only leans against the shotgun muzzle. Mac lowers the gun and tries to calm Jane down. Bill asks for a glass of water, so Mac goes upstairs to fetch him one. When Mac goes upstairs, he finds Sarah peeking through the window, offering herself to him again. Mac tells her to leave him alone, so Sarah walks to the sidewalk. She gives a signal and men run from their hiding place at her command. Just then, Kim asks Mac for help. Jane has her shotgun pointed at Kurt as the two argue. Mac has had it and shouts that they are currently surrounded. He grabs the shotgun and asks Bill what's really going on. Bill repeats that he only wants to change them because a species as selfish and aggressive as humans will never find peace on their own. Mac aims the shotgun at Bill, ready to shoot him for taking away his best friend, the original Bill. Kurt tries to reason with Mac that he can't just murder others based on a belief. Mac eventually lowers the gun, unable to do it. Mac leaves, saying he needs time to himself while Jane sits down to guard Bill. Kurt tries to take charge, but Kim ignores him and goes upstairs. Bill asks Kurt to untie him, but Kurt just snaps at him to shut up. Upstairs, Kim peeks out the window and sees a shadow move across the lawn. Meanwhile, Mac is in the garage, trying to get his bearings as he lets out his frustrations. Kim leans against the door, deep in thought. When she makes up her mind, she steps outside and calls out. Sarah emerges and asks Kim if she's here to join them. In the basement, Bill tries to turn Jane and Kurt against each other, but Jane sees right through his attempt. Kurt approaches Bill and tells him he takes no responsibility for what's happening. Bill cites that it's just like him, always refusing to take accountability which results in him being alone. Kurt looks visibly hurt by Bill's words and asks if one kiss will change all that. He concludes that Bill has indeed gone crazy. Outside, Kim asks Sarah what it's like to be changed. Sarah replies that change will bring her clarity and free her from her insecurities and self-doubt. But when Kim asks if she'll still be herself after it, Sarah questions why she still wants that when she can become so much more. Mac finally leaves the garage only to hear Jane screaming for him to get back downstairs. He runs and grabs their other shotgun and heads downstairs. Outside, Kim and Sarah step close to each other, but just as Sarah leans to kiss her, 
Kim steps back and heads inside as more changed people surround the house. Kim is perplexed by her choice and heads down to yell at the adults to stop fighting, asking them if they even noticed she was gone. Kurt has had enough and decides to leave. Kim tells him it's not safe outside, but he says he's going with or without her. Kim reveals that she went out and met with Sarah and really thought about changing. When asked why, she points out that the alternative is that they're always fighting and shouting. Kim also tells them they're surrounded and the change will come for them soon. Bill confirms that there's a timeline to their plan of assimilation. In the end, Kurt still decides to leave and the others follow him upstairs, trying to stop him. Kim calls him out for wanting to go home, but Kurt throws it back that he had to raise her after Kim's mother got knocked up and dumped Kim on him. He finally leaves and Jane closes the door after him. Kurt doesn't get too far until the changed people surround him. Kurt starts panicking and points them towards Mac's house. Mac wants to go out and help, but Jane doesn't let him. Kim agrees, saying Kurt deserves it. A man holds Kurt down as Sarah advances. Sarah kisses him, and after a moment, Kurt looks around with new eyes. He turns around and raises a thumb to the others in the house. Mac, Jane, and Kim sit by the door as the changed gather outside the house. Mac feels guilty that he didn't help Kurt, but Jane tells him there's nothing they could have done. Kim wonders if maybe she should have gone through with being changed. Mac assures her she doesn't have to change herself because they think she's already awesome the way she is. Mac adds that the change seemed to have it better than them, but are soulless and empty. He reassures them that life may be hard, but at least they're living it. The three head down to tell Bill they're releasing him outside, and they'll shoot if his clone friends try to get in the house. Kim and Mac untie his ropes while Jane points her shotgun at him. Bill stands up, finally free, but he leans in and kisses Jane square in the mouth. Gunshot echoes inside as Bill and Jane fall to the floor after being shot. Jane tells them to stay back and Mac asks her if she's changed and she says yes. Enraged, Mac turns his gun to Bill and shoots him dead. Mac crouches by Jane, tears in his eyes as he asks her if she's in pain, but Jane only tells him to kiss her, enticing him to join them. Mac looks to consider it, pain that Jane has been changed. She explains a kiss passes cellular organisms through saliva, allowing them to inhabit their host and become one. He asks her where they are from and Jane looks up. Jane grows weaker and tells Mac she's losing a lot of blood, hoping to gain sympathy. She says she wants to live but loses consciousness afterward. Mac decides he wants to save Jane, even if she's already changed. So he teaches a reluctant Kim how to load and shoot the shotgun. He carries Jane outside with Kim, aiming her shotgun at the changed people. Mac asks for help, and a changed man steps up and takes Jane, saying they will get her medical attention. Kurt, now changed, steps up too. He apologizes to Kim for always treating her poorly, and Kim shoots back that he should have realized that sooner. Kurt asks them to join, but gets told off, and Kim runs inside. Later, Mac cries at losing Jane, punching the sink. After strengthening his resolve, he fetches bullets for their gun and hands half to Kim. He says they will take turns shooting the changed while the other reloads. Kim expresses doubt that she can shoot, reluctant to kill anybody. But Mac tells her it's either they kill or lose who they are. He adds that nothing worth fighting for will be easy. It's the fight that makes them human. He reminds her that the changed want to exist through them, and they will disappear if they let it happen. After some thought, Kim decides she will fight alongside with Mac. Later, they both receive an alert on the phones for a special broadcast. Mac turns the television on and sees the announcer, Katie Walters, delivering a message to the minority of humanity, resisting the change. She entices that changing gives humans purpose and moral certainty. She then urges everyone to cooperate and open their homes, as those resisting will be taken by force at sunrise. Kim and Mac look exhausted, but reassure each other everything will be okay. Mac is determined to kill all the changed outside their home. Later, as they watch the group of changed outside the house, Mac checks if Kim knows how to reload, asking her to do it over and over again. Kim gets better each time, satisfying Mac. The sun slowly rises over the horizon as Mac and Kim hold their guns close. Kim suddenly proposes they play a game and list the things that make life worth living. They take turns mentioning things, the smell of Jane's hair, sleeping in, getting drunk on a Sunday afternoon, junior prom, driving fast, summer vacations, and lastly, living life. Outside, the change still surrounds the house. Mac and Kim look afraid, but determined. Finally, they both open the door, and the change begin to approach until they see Mac and Kim holding guns. They run just as Mac and Kim pull their triggers. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. 
and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.